A comfort show for me would easily be Cat Dog, a lovely little show about a cat who is also part dog. Or is it a show about a dog who is also part cat? The jury is still out on that, but the verdict that is in is that I love this show, a true staple for me growing up. I've covered the shockingly weird way the show ended earlier this year, but I for sure wanted to talk about it some more on the channel. And what better way to do so than adding it to my Fringe Miss series and talk about the show's Christmas special, a very cat dog Christmas. So welcome back, or hello for the first time to the 25 Days of Fringe Miss, where I cover something interesting, nostalgic, or holiday related every day from the 1st of December to the 25th in order to find that holiday spirit I lost nearly a decade ago. So if you want to be a part of this daily journey and help me find that good old jolly joy, subscribe and come aboard. It's Christmas in Nierberg, the town covered in snow and fog. We enter our story with a little cat dog. With their parted tree, separate but not far, dog got cat a gift that cat wishes was a car. Waiting for his gift, dog hides in his hand, cat scrounges for a present, one jelly bean that is bland. I will not continue this bit anymore, but let's continue this journey to see what's in store, dang it. All right, enough of that shtick. Uh, for one of Dog's traditions, his favorite tradition in fact, they sled down the snowy hill in front of their house and start singing, for only a brief second as we arrive at the mall, where we see transaction after transaction with everything in sight being purchased. A mall Santa is sitting there amongst a very large Christmas tree as Cat Dog comes flying in with Dog landing right on him telling Santa what he wants for Christmas. And it turns out that all he wants is for Cat to like the present that he got him. Cat, however, takes a turn and wishes that he gets a sports car. Cherry red with five on the floor and a catalytic converter. Rancid's niece, Rancine, who is treated like royalty, asks Santa for, well, nothing because she has everything already from being spoiled. That is until she spots Cat Dog and immediately wants to buy them for her final big Christmas present. Rancid tries offering to buy them, but they turn his offer down, which makes Mall Santa have some joy in faith that the Christmas holiday still has some people with good morals and spirit left. Rancine, however, isn't happy about this at all. Cat Dog, while continuing their shopping, run into the greasers who are shopping at the mall as well. So naturally, now they're being chased by them. They hide themselves by wrapping around a nearby Christmas tree as Winslow shows up at the top of the tree for some reason. Cat, secretly speaking to him and being as selfish as possible, asks him if Dog got him that sports car, which Winslow retorts back with the same reaction I would have. Yeah, right, dude. Now when Winslow goes and speaks with Dog, we learn that the present left for Cat from Dog dog is a houseboat made out of popsicle sticks, going on to find out that Cat actually has just been throwing out any gift that he receives from Dog, chalking it up to giving the kids at the dump something to play with. Which, why would Cat even expect a sports car from Dog? One, based on the gifts from every previous year from Dog, and two, you're both like, I don't know, attached together? I'd think you know if he snuck off, got a high paying job, and hit a car somewhere at the house. I thought he was supposed to be the smarter one. <laughs> Cat, with a new idea, convinces Dog that the stuff they need are material items, and it's what will make their Christmas better than usual, clearly showing further that this is all he cares about. So in an attempt to access Rancid's riches, they head back to Rancid and offer themselves up to be bought to make the money off of it, and well, yeah, get access to all their stuff. Dog is reluctant at first, but ultimately gives in and the deal is made. Mall Santa gives a look of disappointment as the one spark he saw in Dog was quickly reversed for the decision he made. Now, at the Green Bunny Mansion, they're all wrapped up in a box and left under the tree to be opened up in a few hours for Christmas. But we revisit that mall Santa, who is sad that this is what Christmas is coming to. And then we find out this mall Santa, well, He's the real Santa. And now because of the final straw with Dog and Cat's influence on him, he now has a bitter taste for all of it. He takes Christmas away, full on canceling it forever. All of the decorations and presents everywhere begin to disappear, with the news fully blaming Cat Dog for this occurrence, meaning everyone in town is now mad at them for ruining the holidays. Hmm. 
Sounds familiar. Cat dog are none the wiser to this once they are opened up on Christmas day as the only present left under the tree. Well, the bare metal skeleton of a tree that's left. Rancine trying to play with them gets quickly ditched by cat jumping into the sports car that they have, the one that he's been wanting and just whips it through their house as dog, well, he's mainly just vibing at this point. They take a moment at one point to gaze up at the bare metal tree, symbolizing the industrial way the holiday is treated more and more nowadays. This makes dog miss the old way and the Christmas traditions he and Kat once had before this, when it wasn't about material items, the flashiness, or anything like that, but the joy of spending time with the ones you love. Kat starts feeling a similar way to an extent. Well, honestly, I think he just had his fix driving the car and now is bored. There's only one problem, though. She won't let them leave. <laughs> Jeez, don't you just hate when you're in the middle of a video and some random weird pseudo skit type thing happens and cuts the flow of the video momentum? Can't relate. Anyway, Rancine traps them within a birdcage dangling high above the ground on the ceiling. Meanwhile, the rest of the town is now assembled into a mob and are out on the streets looking for Cat Dog to make them pay for ruining Christmas. A bit later, Rancine comes to check on them, climbing up a ladder again to see how they are, but she fumbles, ending up knocking the ladder down and hanging from the cage herself. So now they are able to make their way out, but they can't just leave this little girl hanging from that height, regardless of how mean she was. Which, aside from the mall temper tantrum, the wanting to own them and holding them hostage in a cage, she honestly wasn't that bad. Okay, well maybe she is. So they just push her in the cage, locking her there instead. Now they're trying to make their way through the mansion without getting caught by Rancid, who is roaming the halls. They spot a way out through a high up window that they would need to climb up the metal tree to swing themselves from a chandelier to out the window. Which goes great, if I were a liar, they fail pretty bad just to realize that the front door was open the whole time. So now they rush home with five minutes left to the day for Christmas, walking inside their home to find things are not right. Their tree is no more and their party punch they prepared since they always get their own Christmas crashed by others was also gone. And before you know it, everyone was waiting for them and lets them know that Christmas was canceled on Cat Dog's behalf. Even Rancid and Rancine show up who just want to get in on the whooping. Cat breaks down thinking that because of him that all this happened. And while yeah, it's because of him that led to the actions of Dog causing Santa to make the decision he made, yeah, there's really no defending it. It's it, He's not wrong. It's also his fault. In a last ditch effort, Dog begins putting what he can together for a makeshift Christmas, minus the Christmas magic that Santa took away. Making a new DIY tree and DIY punch. I wouldn't drink that. He explains that Christmas, when you boil it down, should be about sharing in the joy with the people you're closest with, even if it's the same people who want to beat you up. You love to see it. So to end their yearly Christmas traditions, Cat Dog goes to place the star on the tree, which set in course a bright magical moonlight to drench the scene in. Christmas doesn't need to be a material celebration, but a celebration of what matters most. Friends and enemies here wish each other a Merry Christmas and hug it out. But just when you think it's all coming to an end, Santa shows up to say that Christmas is back on, after seeing Dog go out of his way to fix what he could and spread some joy to even the people who may not deserve their kindness. He was touched by those actions and thankful to Dog for showing him that the spirit itself does in fact live on. But if they ever do anything like that again, he'll cancel Easter. Cat and Dog finally get to exchange their gifts, as Cat can now see that the gift that he's been waiting for was a popsicle stick boathouse. But he does seem to kind of genuinely cherish it, well, at least as much as he can. He did manage to get Dog a gift, one that Dog is happy with, even if it's just a bar of soap. Dog likes soap. Now, all together, everyone breaks out into song. Lube shocks everyone with his beautiful angelic voice. Oh. 
we end on a final shot of Santa flying through the sky with Cat Dog at the helm guiding the sleigh. All is well, until Dog notices a garbage truck and quickly leads everyone into chaos once more. The end, Cat Dog brings a nice message here about what the joy of Christmas can be for them, even showcasing putting differences aside and breaking bread with those you may not see eye to eye with. For them, this is who feels like family at the end of the day. And family is messy. You may not get along with your family or parts of your family, but the holiday season, with the emotional response to looking at who and what you have in life, can navigate you to that point of forgiveness and acceptance. Now, it may not, we all walk our own separate course, but to see once, and of course going forward, future enemies put aside their hatred and differences to just live in the moment, with or without the magic of the holiday, this is a reason why I love this special. It doesn't break new grounds or really separate itself with a unique idea, but it makes you feel good by the end of it. After all the selfish, materialistic, and mean-spirited aspects the show was focusing on beforehand. But you tell me, how do you feel about this episode? Is it something on your list to watch during the holiday season to get you into that Christmas spirit? Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for hanging out with me here today. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Follow me on Twitter, or else I'm canceling Easter. I'll see you tomorrow with another video for my next day of Fringemas. Check out the playlist to keep up with the month, but until then, later.